Last couple of weeks, we have covered the topics of humility, mercy, and grace. And in particular, we have been looking at it from the perspective of applying these qualities in our relationship with fellow men. In the final installment of the series, we'll be covering on the topic of service. In particular, the reason why I left this topic to be the last is because in order to provide true service that is defined in the Bible, one has to have humility mercy, and also to be willing to extend grace towards others. Firstly, let us see how the Bible defines service. Let us turn to Ephesians 6, verse 6 to 7. This passage reads, Not with eye service as man pleases, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. The Greek word that describes service means to be in bondage of, to be a or to be a slave to. This is a slightly different definition of the word service that we know today. For today's con in today's context, the word service is known to be help, to be of assistance, or to be of aid to. For example, when a certain hotel or airline is known to provide good customer service, it usually means that the staff offers prompt and reliable service or help to its customers. However, the Greek definition of service here is much more intense. It's a much more intense form of service that we know of. The type of service that is being described is that of a bond servant or a slave. In fact, the Greek word for service in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7 is the same Greek word as bond as we see in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. For bond servants, their sole purpose in life is to serve their master. This is the degree of dedication that God desires from us, and this is the same dedication that is required to serve others with humility. From this, we can see that we have to be humble, to um, lower ourselves, to be willing to serve, to, to serve, and also to have mercy and compassion towards others, such that we are able to serve their needs. We also need grace and favor towards others, such that our service goes far beyond the call of duty and what is expected of us. This service, this genuine service is contrasted with eye service as you see in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 6. Eye service is a type of service that is intended for the eyes only whose sole intention is to please men. Next, let us see an example of how this level of service is exemplified through a character from the Bible. For this, we will be looking at the example of Jesus who showed his service towards men and mankind. In particular, we'll be looking at a couple of examples of Jesus serving his disciples as well. Jesus led a life full of service, and despite being the Son of God, his purpose on earth was to minister to others and not to, and not to be ministered to. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, which reads, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. From this passage, we can see that Jesus came onto this earth to minister to others and not to be ministered to. One of the memorable acts of service that Jesus performed was that of washing his disciples' feet, which is recorded in John chapter 13. The washing of the feet of guests is typically done by a lonely servant in the household and is considered to be a menial task. Back in the first century, people would wear sandals wherever they walked. So it was very natural for their feet to be very dirty at the end of the day. In spite of this, Jesus served his apostles by washing each and every one of their feet. I would imagine the confusion of the apostles when Jesus started doing this, when Jesus started performing this action. Just as how Simon Peter was initially confused and declined this very act of service by Jesus, as recorded in John chapter 13, verses 6 to 8 where he asks, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? And in verse 8, he says, Thou shalt never wash my feet. In addition to the account of Jesus washing his disciples' feet, we also know of the ultimate act of service that Jesus performed on the cross of Calvary, which was his sacrifice for the sins of the world. John chapter 15, verse 13 
tells us that there is no greater act of love than one laying his life for his friends. In fact, Jesus died for our sins while we were yet sinners, before we even became friends with him, separated from God because of our sins. This is seen in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some will even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Seeing the example of Jesus in how he has served both his disciples as well as mankind by dying on the cross, let us also see how we can apply the lessons in Jesus ministering to his disciples into our lives as well in serving our fellow brethren. Firstly, Jesus wanted us to learn from his service in, ministry, in ministering to our fellow brethren. Let us read John chapter 13, verses 14 to 15. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. So what can we learn from the example of Jesus in his service to his disciples, and also um, to Israel during his earthly ministry? Firstly, we can learn from his actions. The service that Jesus performed was exactly what the disciples needed in terms of showing them that he was humbling himself and being a servant to his disciples. We read in an earlier account that the disciples were previously um, fighting amongst themselves to see who would be the greatest in the kingdom. And that is, in, that is seen in Mark chapter 10, verse 37, where um, his disciples, when two of his disciples came to him and said, Grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in thy glory. They initially thought that Jesus would be setting up an earthly kingdom and hence wanted to secure their, their um, position of power in the kingdom. However, Jesus used this example in Mark chapter 10 verse 37, as well as John chapter 13 verse 14 to 15, as we have read earlier, to drive home the point that the spiritual kingdom that Jesus is setting up, or, or rather was setting up, is marked by service and not dominion towards one another. On top of that, we also see that the sacrifice of Jesus was perfect. In the Old Testament, the Jews had to offer continual sacrifices because the blood of bulls and goats could not remove sin. However, Jesus was a perfect sacrifice and his sacrifice or service to mankind for dying on the cross was perfect for the re removal of sins. This was exactly what mankind needed to be reconciled with God. Likewise, learning from the analogy of the service of Jesus, our service should also be appropriate and also cater towards the needs of the brethren. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 12, which reads, for the, administration of, for the administration of this service not only supply the want, the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. This tells us that the, ministry, the, the, the ministration of our service should supply the wants of the saints, that it should be appropriate and cater to the needs and wants of the saints. We should therefore be empathetic towards our fellow brethren in understanding their needs such that we are able to effectively minister or serve them. The next thing we can learn from Jesus is that of his attitude. Like Jesus, we should also serve from the heart, which we can also read off in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, as we have read at the start of this um, recording. Our service should be genuine and from the heart, and it should not be done with the intention to be praised or to be seen by others, as is the case of service by men pleasers that is being done by eye service. For these men pleasers, they are so intentioned of to serve is to please men, to get praises from men for their service. Jesus warns us about the folly of giving, of praying, and also of fasting in order to be seen by men. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2, verse 5, and verse 16. Jesus tells us that those who want to be seen of men would have their reward, and they would not receive a reward from God. Therefore, in order to serve effectively, we must also be humble, be merciful, and be gracious 
towards others. We must be humble enough to want to serve others. We must also be merciful or empathetic towards others such that we are able to understand their needs well. And we also must be gracious towards one another such that we are able to go above and beyond what is expected of us in extending goodwill to others. As we look forward to a new work week ahead, let us also be on the lookout for opportunities to shine Christ's light in service to others. Thank you.